Kowalski, analysis. So I actually Googled this. I was curious what the number one relationship question people ask is. And I, I wanted to see if you had a video on it. I didn't actually see it. And it was just, it's kind of general, but it was, what does a healthy relationship look like? That's crazy and sad that that's the question. That shows how many people don't know what healthy is and either never witnessed it or lived it. So here's the thing. There's, there's healthy in two perspectives. There's what society is creating as healthy because they're attaching it to what's common. Meaning you'll hear people say, arguing is healthy. Arguing is not healthy. Disagreement is okay. Arguing, going back and forth, cursing, negative energy, that's not healthy. There's nothing healthy about that. But there are a lot of people in society who will sell that as a quote-unquote healthy relationship. So to me, healthy relationship is two people who've addressed their past issues healed from their past issues, understand how to communicate to each other effectively, are sharing the same values, are embracing what the other needs and willing to pour into that, and uh, desire to go in the same direction with each other. Mm. That, to me, is pretty much a healthy relationship, which is rare to come, to come across as far as people actually being in one, but that is what would make one healthy. Why do you think it's so rare? Do you think people were just rushing to it with the wrong ones? They can't take being single because it's hard or? Hell, all of that, all of that. People rushing, people are afraid to be alone, people seeing bad examples. Again, what you'll have is you have dysfunctional relationships trying to pass their behavior off as normal. So it's almost like, this is just what comes to my head. Some guys will tell women, oh, every guy cheats. He does that because that's the behavior he engages in. And to validate it, he has to make it seem like that is normal behavior. Again, all couples argue. I have to make myself feel like there's nothing really wrong here. So let me tell other people. So you're passing down dysfunctional behaviors and trying to claim it as normal and okay and healthy. So now people have skewed perceptions of what a real relationship is. And more specifically, they're not passing it down to people. They're passing it down to their kids. You know what I'm saying? People who are looking up to them and view them as an example. So it's a lot of bad information going around. It's a lot of brokenness, a lot of people who haven't healed, fear of being alone, lack of patience. We have a, a, a very skewed perception on the timing of our lives when it comes to getting into a relationship and having kids, which I think has completely messed people up. It has people rushing before they're truly ready, and it has people rushing with the wrong person. Yeah. So often I'll get questions from people in relationships and they're wondering if the love is real, you know, people that aren't yet married and and they're physical. Mm -hmm. And what I always tell them is the best way to audit the relationship is just to stop having sex, have a conversation with the person and say, look, we're going to stop having sex. And if we become convinced that we're in love, we'll get married and then we'll start having sex again on our wedding night. But if, if it becomes clear that we're not in love, we'll break up. I actually did this. I did this with my last girlfriend Mm -hmm. and within about three weeks, it was like the clouds parted and I could see clearly And it. it, I don't know if it was from not having all the hormones, that cocktail of hormones going through my body from the sex or I don't know exactly what it was, but I I was able to see clearly or maybe just God because I was praying during that whole time. Like if, if we're not right, you know, here I'm putting this hard thing for me to do on the altar and he answered and he broke us up or at least that's the way it worked out. So is that something that you have advised some of your clients or in your talks? Do you tell people if they're not yet married, the best way to audit a relationship is to pump the brakes on the physical or what do you suggest? Well, I definitely think that is definitely one of the strongest ways to gain some clarity on the relationship. You pull back from the physical. I definitely think that would make a huge difference. A lot of people are attached to their partner strictly because of the physical. That's the real core issue there or one of the core issues for some people. The other thing that I tell people to look at is rather than trying to evaluate if this person loves you, you have to go within yourself and ask yourself, do you really love them? Mm. Why are you here? Because the reality is that some people are trying to validate staying in the relationship by determining how the other person feels. To hell with how they feel. And that's not to be disrespectful or to dismiss them. It's to simply say, if you are not truly in love with them, then they are not truly in love with you. Mm. It does not work one-sided. It has to be two ways, all right? So when you start to really go within yourself, when you take a step back and realize, damn, 
I'm really not happy here, but I'm here because I've invested so much time or I'm here because I'm afraid to start all over. When you start to realize your motivation is not love, then there's your answer. There's your answer. That means their motivation is not love either. It's probably attachment, infatuation, you name it. So, yeah. and that goes back to my belief of connection. A connection is a two-way experience. And if one person's claiming it and the other one does not fill it from within, something's off. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, you know, I hear people say, because you can see sometimes from the outside of a relationship, you can see it a lot more clearly than the people inside it sometimes. They'll be like, well, I'm in love with them. And I'm like, well, it takes two people to be in love. And if that person is out sleeping with everybody around town, you're really not in love. I could be in love with Angelina Jolie. <laughs> I don't know who the hell I am. So it really does take two people. What's kept me in relationships too long when I was physical with girls was they would be more emotionally invested than me. And then I didn't want to break their heart. I thought I would, I didn't want to crush them. So I would just stay. But I came to the point where I'm like, if I can't love them, really be in love with them in a way that they deserve, then I'm doing them a disservice. Exactly. Because there is someone out there that will love them. And like they're the only girl in the world. If I can't do that, then for me to stay with them is selfish of me. Absolutely. It's cowardly really to not have the conversation.